All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. <clears throat> and I just want to apologize. Um, my health has not been good of the you know the past year, year and a half. Um, for those of you that don't know, you know I'm medically retired. Um, I was medically retired after I was in my 33rd year of service. It's kicked my ass. What can I say? Um, you know, burn pits, all the vaccinations, the injuries, it all adds up over time, catches up to you at the end. And uh, I've been battling this now for a little over a year and a half. I think I, I don't know, I had caught COVID and I've had like um, that simmering background illness, the long term COVID. Uh, there's really nothing they could do about it. It's starting to, it, it is starting to get better. It's just taking a lot of time, that's all. And uh, <clears throat> it's had me laid up here for the past uh, you know, week. Now, I went down to California uh, to see an old buddy of mine, a Greenbury buddy of mine. Uh, it was his birthday, and uh, I hadn't seen him in probably a good five, six years. And I went down to go hang out with him for a good four days. And while I was there, I had uh, uh, PRP treatments, which is uh, platelet-rich plasma injections. And I had it injected in my lower back, right shoulder, right knee. And uh, I could just say that it, it did hurt quite a bit. Um, but the good that's the bad news the good news is I think it's uh, helped uh, helped out quite a bit with the irritation I was having in those joints are you the kind of person who's run out of feelings to hurt yeah 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 wah 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 then we have the redonkulous swag for you and we have multiple locations where you can get it Go to the Stream Elements store or Crypto Fashion and embrace your inner fat punisher. Because after all, there's a little bad pop in all of us, even your mother. Shirts, stickers, mugs, and hats are on sale now. Your support helps keep us independent from big tech and keeps this life-saving train on the tracks. Links are in the Meat Gazer box. <laughs> Probably one of the main reasons um, I needed to have all that work done is, you know, I was wounded in 1989 when I jumped into Panama, was run over by an enemy vehicle and my whole right side, um, it's never been the same. Uh, when I got wounded, I had a torn tendon to my knee, third degree sprained ankle, dislocated right hip and may or may not have had cracked ribs and what have you, uh, on the right side. But it is what it is. Now, you know, just like whenever, uh, you know, old army buddies get together, the stories come out and uh, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, reminiscing, shall we say. Now, I met John uh, at Robin Sage, which is a post which I think it's like 30, 40 minutes away from Fort Bragg. And uh, it's pretty much where they run their selection, special forces selection out of, at least for the past 30 some odd years. <clears throat> now, this was uh, 1991, and they had just switched over to the new SAS model. Um, Apparently, before that, you know, the long tab was fairly easy to get, and it had been turned into uh, just this is a huge clusterfuck. And uh, glad it's nice to see that they actually corrected a lot of that stuff and uh, turned it into an absolute fucking meat grinder. Now, when I met him, uh, we were on a five ton, and we were driving to. Um, Robin Sage from Fort Bragg and uh, he worked on a counter intel unit on Bragg and I was you know basically from 2nd Ranger Battalion so 
you know, I had no hair or at least uh, I had a hind tight and he had like long Dutch boy hair, which I didn't care for, but I don't know. We're sitting, I'm sitting up there on the bench. He's laying there on the deck and I just kind of kick him and I'm like, Hey faggot, nice hair. And he said something back to me and I was like, all right, he's cool. Cause you know, that's, that's how dudes, that's how they operate. They fuck with each other and see who can take what. It's like a pecking order. It's hard to explain. There isn't a class on it. It's just when you get men together, it's just what they do. And, uh, the funny part about that is this, <clears throat> we're on the ground about, uh, three or four days. And then the first few days, it's like they do the, um, there's IQ tests and psycho evals and, uh, they make you do written essays at night. A lot of the sleep, uh, sleep deprivation and what have you. They did that pretty much in the first week. And, um, uh, they give, uh, everyone your food up front. So basically within the first three or four days, they had given us basically all of the MREs, the food that we were going to need for the rest of the course. Okay. So we kept it in boxes and whatever under our bunk. And, uh, you know, we get released to go grab some chow, go over to the picnic tables to eat. And I'm standing there, and, and John comes out, and he's got this look on his face, like, uh, you know, like somebody had just, like, you know, basically pissed in his cornflakes. And what happened is somebody had got into the barracks and took all his food. All of it. He had nothing. And uh, they only give you enough food to make it, you know, that's it. He had no food then. And for all intents and purposes, his selection course was done because he had no food. So, uh, I didn't really, uh, I didn't waste any time. I just said, fine, no problem. I just gave him half my food. And he was just like, well, what are you going to eat? And I'm like, motherfucker, I'm not starving. I'm just going to have to rob some people. And the look on his face was abject horror. So I start fuck with him. I'm like, so uh, you've never mugged anyone before? Jeez, where, where'd you go to school at? Well, it turns out, you know, he grew up uh, with a silver spoon in his mouth. Uh, father's fairly rich. Uh, used to be a steel broker. And he went to private schools and what have you. So, yes, he had never mugged anyone. Completely aliened him. And the way it worked in selection is every night you had people uh, ducking out. All right, the, uh, once uh, they, you know, sent you back to the barracks 10, 11 o'clock at night for your, you know, four hours of sleep, which is usually less, there's always the onesie, twosie guys ones that, like, pack up their stuff all quiet and then they kind of just sneak out. Well, I had made sure I'd secured a bunk right there by the door. So you're not coming or going out of the building without waking me up. And sure as shit, you know, we hear the guy doing the packing up and he's doing the duffel bag drag. And I get off the bunk, turn the light on, and there he is. This, I don't remember who the guy was. He's got his rucksack, um, duffel bag, and he's got two boxes of MREs. So I'm like, so uh, what's going on? And he's like, well, you know... It's just, I'm hurt. I can't go on anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to pack it in. I'm like, okay. I understand completely. Uh, leave the food. And he gives me that look like, well, they said I need to turn in the food. I'm like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Tell you not to come back? Get the fuck out of here. You ain't coming back here. So, uh, John and I, I think we, uh, I think we, we mugged like three guys just to get the, the quota. I mean, we, we didn't take it to the uh, extreme. Basically, we just got enough food to, to make him whole my, and myself whole. And that was it. And we didn't get all greedy about it or anything like that. And uh, I thought that was uh, that needed to happen. 
And I had forgotten a lot of the details in regards to the stories because it's over 35 years ago. I mean, it's a long fucking time. But it is what it is. Um, and we talked about uh, when the, the final road march at the end it was like 28 miles. And uh, I told John about the story about the old, uh, well, he wasn't old, he was a major uh, who had quit on the side of the road, who about five years prior to that basically uh, looked me in the face and said, hey, you're not military material. Little did he know that uh, he'd be broken on the side of the road and I would go on to get my green brain. He was a quitter. I thought that was uh, that was a very good uh, story of retribution. And I've, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that one. I've already talked about it. You guys can look it up in the past library. But, uh, you know, he and I have remained friends ever since. And, and the, the way he explained it, he's like, hey, it's not very often in this world you're going to run into somebody who right off the bat is just going to give you half their food with very little questions asked. And I was like, well, okay. He goes, no, you don't you seem to understand. You, you find somebody like that. You stay friends with them. Those are the guys you want on yeah, your six. All right. Uh, you don't want guys who are going to basically talk a bunch of mad trash behind your back and look out only for themselves because, you know, those people are selfish. And in the grand scheme of things, they usually don't accomplish great things. I mean, they might do okay in the long run, but like the real, real good ones, the great people, they're not selfish. At least from my observations. But hey, what do I know? But anyway, that is... Uh, that was my trip to California. Uh, I can say that... Uh, not a fan of California. Um... It breaks my heart to see all of the craziness going on. And a large majority of that craziness wouldn't exist if we didn't have a corrupt media that was brainwashing people out there. But that's a whole other goddamn video.